So state film incentives. This has been the hottest topic, I think, for the past five or six years regarding film. And now we're seeing states finally compete because film does bring a lot of revenue to the state. Now, it's very important for you to realize, okay, what type of film do I have? What state would that film fit into? For instance, I'm wanting to do a horror film coming up. I need an abandoned hospital. So I'm going to look probably in the northern regions. I'm going to look maybe a random Illinois area. I'm going to look Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm going to go a little creepier. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a list of all the states I think this film could possibly film in. Then there is also a website which shows you the state film incentives by state. I have attached that for you at the end. It is one of the most informative things any writer, director, producer, filmmaker could see. The reason this would matter as a writer when I'm writing a script, think about this. Think about out of all the states, how many states would this scene be able to be filmed in? Because that's going to matter when the script is trying to get sold, and you're trying to get money for this script. Or how many states could the entire thing be shot in? Would it just be one? <clears throat> On the list attached at the end, I have each state as well as what their current incentives are. There are some great ones out there. Some states are offering a 35% tax credit, which is really, really great. But they have stipulations, and it's all lined out for you by state. <clears throat> Find out if the state and or states that you wish to film in offer tax rates. The biggest thing. Compare the states and breaks they offer by visiting this website. It's www.ncsl.org. <clears throat> there is an attachment on the state breakdowns at the end of this. I've also put all the websites um, at my next to last slide on the end. Currently, there's 45 states and Puerto Rico, in case you want to go have a tropical day, um, that offer incentives. So there's not lack of states that are offering that. <clears throat> Hopefully, there will be 50 states eventually that will be offering these for you. But right now, there's 45. So that is a lot of states that you could look at when you're writing your project, when you, if you decide to direct your project full term, if you decide to stay on as a producer. There's 45 states, and each state is different. So look those up. Think about that when you're writing. Think about the place, the location, what you would need, anything that might make that special, and look at the states that offer the best incentives, because people are actually looking at that a lot when they're going to a lot of the festivals to buy films and things like that. They're looking at monetization, basically. How am I going to make money on this? Will this make money? Okay. Using union or non-union actors, always a hot topic for people. So in my experience, union, non-union, um, both actors are great across the board. I've seen great non-union actors. They simply work in one of those right-to-work states. They don't need to join the union. They can still work on a union film, so why would they pay their dues? Doesn't mean they're a bad actor. They're still great. So when it comes to using union or non-union actors, I just put a few things for you to consider. First is your priority is to refer to the right-to-work state. So on our previous slide and those 24 states at the end, you need to see in the right to work state what I could do with my union or non union act. Make sure that you confirm if someone is union that they're paid in full and their union dues. This could come and bite you in the end if you don't confirm their union. So then you're going to get a nice letter from the union and it's going to say, hey, this person owes dues. And that person is not going to get paid or your company is going to get a fine because then you've hired a union person that hasn't paid their union dues. Make sure to double check before contracts are signed. Before anyone is steps foot on your set, you have confirmed they are union, you have their number. Because the last thing you want is getting a surprise, you owe an additional $500 for every day this person works. Figure out what percentage of your film needs to be union. Each state in those 45 states, each one, 
um, has a percentage as far as what your film would need to do to be union. So let's say, for instance, I want to film in North Carolina. Well, if I'm going to film in North Carolina, then I know out of my people that are hired for that particular shoot, at least 65% of people hired need to be union. Now, the rest of that, if I want to save money on my budget, I can hire the additional part up to 100%, according to each state. I can hire that um, as a percentage. So make sure to know each state, which is also on the PDF that's attached, make sure to know each state's needs and the percentage that the union wants for that state. Now note on that, all the unions are different. CGA needs a different percentage. SAG needs a different percentage. So make sure to know which unions you use and which unions need certain percentages.